Hello, my name is Ray Hughes and I'm an interviewer for the Veterans History Project uh, authorized by the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And today's date is the 31st of January, 2018. And this interview is being conducted at the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library in Cincinnati, locally administered by Brian Powers, who happens to be our cameraman today. And today we have the honor and privilege of interviewing Timothy Eugene Motley, a United States Army veteran and Vietnam veteran. And Mr. Motley, it's a pleasure to meet you. You too, sir. How are you doing? Good. Is it all right to call you Tim? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's your first name? I'm sorry. Ray. Ray. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tim, if you would, uh, tell us where you were born and when you were born. Okay. I was born in West Blockton, Alabama, on uh, October 13th, 1947. I see. Mm-hmm. And, and, go ahead. And uh, what was your mother's name, Tim? Uh, uh, Marcella. Tommy Marcella Motley. Tommy mm -hmm. Marcella. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, your father's name? Uh, Oliver T. Lynch. Oliver T. Lynch. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, did you have any brothers and sisters, Tom? No, I'm only child. Only child. Well, there, there, there was a, a rumor going around that I have a half-sister, but I never met her. But I, go ahead. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, and what did your mother do for a living, Tim? A cook. Uh, in Alabama? Well, I don't know what she did in Alabama. Oh, okay. But and she got, when she got to Cleveland, oh. she was a cook uh, now, in hospitals. And your grandparents, uh, Tim, did, uh, on your mother's side, did you know your grandparents down there? Uh, not really. I didn't meet my, that I can remember, didn't meet my grandmother at all. Uh, my grandfather, I knew him, but he died when I was a young man too, when I was young anyway. So I didn't really get to make any kind of, uh, you know, uh, Let's see, I, yeah, knowledge. I mean, uh, you, never, you never got close to no. Uh, mm -hmm. um, well, you left Alabama when you were how old? Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. So you didn't really get to, to know to Alabama that, that much. Yeah. Uh, I was raised in Cleveland. Did you go to school any in Alabama? Yes, a little bit. Not kindergarten. I, I see, just kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember anybody you grew up with in Alabama at all? Not really. Never did run into anybody again? Uh, well, there are things that happened over years that I ran into people that was in my orbit at the time when I was a child, mm -hmm. and I met them later on in life, you know, about, I, I have all kinds of stories to tell about things that happened to me during my life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, uh, like you said, did I meet anybody? There was a girl that I grew up, well, knew when I was a child, but but as I grew older, didn't know her. But anyway, I met this girl one night. And ended up, that was one of the kids that I did meet back when I was a child. Well, anyway. In Alabama? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that it right? was a, I've, had, I've had stories about things that happened in my life. It was sort of odd and unusual, you mm -hmm. know. Well, we'll get to those, I hope. Oh, good boy. You got, us, you got some stories to hear. Good. Uh, so... You were about seven years old when your mother decided to move to Cleveland? Well, actually, she was already here. Oh. She had left prior to me being that old, maybe a couple of years. I don't know exactly yeah. how long it was to, from her leaving there and coming to Cleveland to find a better job, basically. You know, when she, sure. back in the 40s, I mean, yeah. the 50s and stuff. It and was a big migration right, in those days. Back then, okay. And I'm one of those migrations, you know. Yeah, a product of that migration. Mm -hmm. Yep, so. Well, who uh, did you stay with when your mother come up there? Her sister. Or her sister? Before she left uh, down in, in Alabama, I lived with her until my mother got situated here. Then she sent for me, her uncle, or brother rather, my, my, my mother's brother, and a couple of nieces, one niece I know, another family member, we all dumped an old 51 Ford, and, or 50 or whatever it was, old car. But anyway, and moved and came to Cleveland. What was your sister's name that you lived with? Her sister? Yeah, your mother's sister. That uh, you were Lula, Lula. Lula? Lula Lee was her, her name. Formerly a Motley, but when she got yeah. married, it was Lee. Lee was her last name. I see. Mm -hmm. Now, 
so they, your mother was up here in Cleveland, Ohio, not, mm -hmm. and uh, she'd been there a couple years, and finally she, she was Sit. working. Yeah, got another and, job and everything, got situated. And so she sent for you. Yeah, and come you, up. Got, you guys got in a 50, what, well, 50 something, or, whatever, Ford, yeah, this old Ford. Ford. Mm -hmm. And drove up to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, do you remember that trip? Yeah, a little bit. I, I remember one story where they said I had, back in them days, we didn't have bathrooms and all this. And you know how it was with black and white back then. You know, white place for a black, place for a white, that kind of thing. But anyway, they, I, they, I, boo, I, I boo booed in a paper bag and they rolled my shit up. And I'm sorry, I'm using these a, words. Yeah. No, <laughs> and no. they. Doctor, we got a stop. He got a ticket. Uh, you know, you got a then. traffic ticket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what state? In Alabama. I guess it was in Alabama. We was on our way here. I guess. I matter. You know what? I never. I never really thought about where actually that did happen. I just remember the story them telling me over the years about that I boo booed and they wrapped it up in a paper bag and dropped it in front of the courthouse. And I guess that was a big thing back, you know, funny looking thing back then, you know. Yeah. But, uh, cause they didn't have pampers. And, did they know. give you a ticket? Uh, or did they you gave them a ticket, I guess. You and know, uh, I'm a baby, I don't really. They didn't know. detain you or anything? No, right? other than give them a ticket and letting us go, I guess. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. I ended up in Cleveland, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, any other memories you have of that trip driving up to Cleveland? No. Not really, no. So you, so they dropped you off in Cleveland. Now, did they turn? Did your folks turn around and go back? And brought I you there? can't go that far into it. I, uh, they, well, I know a couple of them are still there in Cleveland. I don't. Matter of fact, uh, one of the ladies. Matter of fact, everybody that, that brought me up here are gone now. And uh, about a month or a little, about a month and a half, two months ago, uh, my 83-year-old cousin. One of the pre people that brought me to Cleveland passed away. She was 83. So, so <coughs> some of the folks that brought you up there stayed there then? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the fellow who got the ticket? Did he go back to Alabama? No, that was my brother's brother. He was still there, too. He stayed in Cleveland. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He stayed in Cleveland. That was pretty much the migration of the family uh -huh. up here. Matter of fact, the sister that I stayed with in Alabama, a few years later, I don't know exactly how much time later, she moved to Cleveland, you too, you know. That's uh, where basically all of our family, you know, moved to at that time. But tell me, what, where was your mother working when you first got to Cleveland? At, at the hospital, at the city, city hospital in Cleveland. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. and she was doing that, what, there? She was the cook? Cook, cook? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. You see, back in those days, they didn't have stuff pre-made, or you cooked a meal, you know what I mean, a real good, Mm -hmm. Meal, like a home cooked meal. Right. Back in those days, they didn't have all that fancy stuff, and you know, like you do now. Huh. And uh, so, in the meantime, while she's working at the hospital, mm -hmm. you're you're going to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember what school you were going to? Mm, I the first school you. I were can't to? remember the names of those. It's been so long. Yeah. I the last elementary school that I went to when I graduated from was called Kinsman Elementary School. Back then, you know, Kinsman. was that the uh, high school? No, it was junior. It was the elementary. Element Kinsman. Yeah, yeah it was named Kinsman Elementary School. You uh, remember where you were living there in uh, Cleveland? Your address about? Yeah, mm -hmm. 3003 East 83rd Street. That's where I grew, pretty much grew up at. I see. Okay. What part of Cleveland is that? On the east side. East side. Mm -hmm. And um, so. Your mother worked at the hospital for a couple of years. Then where did she, she work? She worked for a while. Well, she worked at, I don't know, exact, I can't give you these exact times. Right. But I know she ended up working at the uh, Children's Hospital and, in Cleveland. Uh, that, uh, and she was a cook there also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now she stayed there a long time, didn't she? Yeah, she got, that's when she retired. Well, actually she didn't retire. She pretty much passed away. She, she passed away at 52. Oh my goodness. So she, she died young. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Seven, nine days after my stepfather passed away. Nine days. Now, who was your stepfather? Silas Melvin Robinson, that was his name. He was from uh, Alabama originally, too, you know. How did your mother meet him? Uh, don't get me to lie. 
I can't remember exactly how they met. Yeah. I know they family people and people that they knew and everything. So they. How old were you when they got married? Would you say? When they got married, probably teens or something. I guess. Oh, in your teens. Yeah, it was okay. pretty. So you was pretty well grown when your mother uh, married your stepfather. Ah, uh, what well, not grown? I well, say teenager, early teen, teenage, teenage, early teens, teenage. You know. Yeah. 14, 13, 15. What did he do for a living? He was a, uh, worked in a, a, a steel mill-like thing, you know? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a story about him, too. But to me, I always have a story about everybody and everything. What's his story? <coughs> <coughs> he wasn't a liar, for one. A what? Well, he wasn't a liar. He, he much told you what he was going to do and what he wasn't going to do, and that's what he did. And, He's a pretty honest man on things like that, and you know. And mm -hmm. at the time when I first, they first got together, you know, when you got young kids, and I sort of have a problem with, you know, that new, new figure coming around in my life, you know, that kind right. of thing. Right, a man. So me and him, did, we sort of didn't bump heads, but after time, and we, as time grew up, and I grew up, and listening to him over the years, he sort of made me the man I am. Today, you know, pretty much, you know what I mean? Oh, he's a good influence on you. Oh, yeah, very good. At the time, though, I didn't look at it that way. You know, we look at kids and teenagers, look at stuff much differently. But throughout the years and the way I pretty much grew up, pretty much, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did, uh, you said you were the only child? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did, you, did you have any other half-siblings or anything? Well, no, not physically me knowing for sure of that. Uh, they said my father had a daughter somewhere, never met her, never did nothing. So mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not positive on that. And what, you said you met your real father though, some... Oh yeah, we, we knew each other pretty You run good. into him where? Huh? Where'd you run into him when you... Okay, here we go. Um, we was at a picnic. Are you familiar with Cleveland area at all? No. There used to be a place called Euclid Beach. Is that on the lake? Yeah, called Euclid Beach. It was a uh, amusement park like. And back in those days, companies used to have picnics at, at places like that, you know. And they had a company picnic at this uh, thing one time. And I had never met my father at this right. time. Didn't know nothing about him, period. But anyway, my mother looked up and said, there go your daddy. She hadn't saw him either, you know. It was just one of those coincidental things yeah. that we ended up in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you go over and meet yeah, him? Yeah, went over and did the... Hi, daddy thing, you know what I mean? You remember kids, you know what I mean? What the kid gonna do? You know what I mean? Right. But anyway, that's how, that's when I met my father. Did you guys get along? When yeah, you, okay, yeah, well, but, but when you say get along, we got along, it wasn't no... lovey dovey. It wasn't that goody two things like you find today. You right. know, that, uh, anyway, we pretty much, and I came in contact with his life and he was a womanizer and all kinds of, it goes in, it gets into this some deep family yeah. things, well, you know. Yeah, I understand. I, uh, he, was, he was married at the time. His wife didn't know nothing about me, uh, about okay. her ha having a child. I was surprised to, to him, well at the time, you know, right. to him and everything, you know what I mean? So, okay. Uh, but, uh, well, I won't dig any further. Well, I, it, don't matter. It's it really doesn't matter to me yeah. because that's pretty much a part of my life and it's a part of me. Did you, did you stay acquainted with your real father yeah. then? Yeah, okay. We, we, for years, we got him pretty much. We never was close, close. You, you had to know the man. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And pretty much and he bought me things. He, we went to football games and things like that, and you know, but we still, we never was that really a father-son like thing. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I used to stay with his girlfriends and things like that. You know what I mean? He was, you know, that kind of guy. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You, uh, after you graduated from grade school, you mm -hmm. went to high school. Where'd you go to high school? And what was the name of the school? I uh, went to a school called Thomas Alva Edison. It was a all-boys school, one of the last ones. Uh, <laughs> it was a trade school. Oh, okay. Uh, 
that kind of thing. I learned a few trades and everything, you know. Was it a four-year course? Uh, from from I went to there from eighth, from seventh grade to the twelfth. Okay, yeah. It was one of those things, you know. Yeah. Um, I graduated when I was 18. But anyway, go ahead. You graduated at, at, at how old? About 18. About 18. Mm -hmm. Almost 19. Did you pick up any trade or anything like that while you were at uh, at the trade school? Yeah. Oh, I was a horticulture. I was. I, I did a little bit. I did a little welding. I did a lot of stuff. Uh huh. You know, I pretty much passed my courses. So hey, and I got out of school. I they got you a job and everything through the school, and I got a job uh, landscaping at the Calvary Cemetery, one of the largest cemeteries in Cleveland. I see. Mm -hmm. At the Calvary Cemetery. Yes, that was the name of the Calvary uh -huh. Cemetery. Still there, of course. Uh, yeah, I guess it's still there. Uh, I don't think they picked up all them dead folk. I don't know. What year did you graduate? 1966. 1966. Mm -hmm. And it was an all-male school. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I, got, I got some weird stuff to tell, but go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. And it's something weird to do with that, that school. We had, for the time it was, we had a pretty modern school compared to what most school we had. We had an indoor swimming pool. We had an indoor gym. One of the few schools around that had an outdoor stadium and all that kind of stuff too. That's where most of the schools around played the football stuff at our school, you know, because we had, you know, a nice stadium and everything. But anyway, we had a pool in the school, right? Do you know we swim naked? Mm -hmm. Yeah, naked. We didn't, didn't no. know. The only people that had swimming suits on was the lifeguards. Yeah. Why we had to swim naked? Don't ask me. Well, we had the same thing in Cincinnati. They had boys with new at the Central Y. Did y'all swim naked? Yes. Well, we did too. And why? I don't know to the day. I know. I, somebody we was talking to somebody not too long ago about why did that happen. We I don't know. But I don't that's know. what we did. And I and by growing up that way, you saw some of the weirdest looking things with people. You know, <laughs> we had guys there with six toes, that kind of thing. Oh, you know? I know. I, it, but uh, that that w back in the fifties and I guess all the way up to your sixties, mm -hmm. that was a uh, something that happened in different places. You yeah, know? Mm -hmm. no big deal. But I, you can't explain it. We never thought. I never, you know, to the day what goes on today and everything. Now today that would be a real crime. Oh my God! <laughs> mm -hmm. You come, got all these young men come, running around, they ling ling hanging around. They come around here and arrest you today. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> So you know what I did to to help to become to get out of that? I became a lifeguard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I had I had to put I could put on my trunks instead of uh, you know. Yeah, uh, I was just thinking uh, I joined the Air Force. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so we're at uh, 1966, mm -hmm. and you've uh, graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. Now at this time, have you got any girlfriends or anything of that nature? Yeah. Anybody oh, yeah. that that, that uh, had a lasting effect on you? Well, after the fact, after I got out of the, out of Vietnam, I, my girlfriend that I was going with then, uh, we and her pretty much had a baby. My oldest son, he was born in 1970. Uh, he's now, did 40. you know her before you went to oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, She was a girlfriend before yeah, you went right, to serve. Uh, right. And what her, her and a couple of few more other girls probably too. But well, anyway. sure, but <laughs> huh? that's normal for a young man. But mm -hmm. uh, what, what's her name? Geraldine. Yeah. Geraldine Jackson was her last name. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's 1966, mm -hmm. and you're working at Calvary Cemetery. Probably I don't. So you telling me where I might have been working? Had several different anyway. Well, you had a you, you yeah, got, you, uh, that you was part of horticulture. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. did, it, you, did you work anywhere else besides the cemetery? Yeah, my father at the time he worked at a wine company. Okay, and I worked sort of a part time thing, doing things at the wine company. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got me hooked up with this electrician guy. So I was training to be an electrician, and then I got drafted, and that killed that. And when I got out to the military, the guy that I was training with, he, he ended up dying, so I went into another direction. I went 
you got a job at General Motors, but anyway. Okay. Um, so, you're how old when you got your draft notice? Uh, seven days after my 20th birthday. Okay. So Never forget it. <laughs> huh? Never forget it. And your birth date is? Uh, October 13th. October the 13th. Seven so days after that, the 20th of November. 20th of October, October, I got my draft papers. 20th of October, 1967. Seven. Yeah. yeah. And where were, you, where, where were you living when you got your draft notice? At home, my parents. And what was that address? Uh, 3003 East 83rd Street. Same one. Okay. Never forget it. Anyway. Yeah. What, did, what, did, what was your feeling when you got the draft notice? Well, the, uh, back in those days, the mailman come in your house or whatever anyway. I lived upstairs in this, or uh, stayed in my room. Anyway, uh, he bought me a paper. He said, I got a letter here from, from your uncle. The mailman That's, said that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. I ain't <laughs> never got a letter before about this time. You know what I mean? In fact, he said, I got a letter from your uncle here. I said, what the hell my uncle doing sending me a letter? You know, you, you don't, you're not, your brain ain't hooked in. So it said, I got the letter and it says, you have been selected by your friends and neighbors to serve in the United States Armed Forces. Forces, your friends and neighbors. Anyway, I'm cussing whoever his friends and neighbors are putting me in the military. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, I got my paper in, and like I say, uh, seven days after that, I was downtown getting to go through the paper, you know, the whatever, you know, and then 30 days after that, I was uh, getting on this plane flying to Fort Knox, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you landed at Fort Knox in um, November December? The November the 20th. Oh, November the 20th. <laughs> Never forget it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your greeting and where did you land? Uh, in Louisville? Uh, baby, all I know is the airport and the, and the base or whatever. We didn't, back in them days, we didn't look around and try to find out. We, we got there. We got off this damn plane the first time I ever flew in a plane. And it shook and spit and fired, and it was on a, a real storm that night. And like we was talking about the, it, the ice falling, you know, and the noise. Oh my God, scariest thing that ever happened to me in my life at the time. Yeah. Kissed the ground when I got off that plane. So you let you arrived. DC three. That's uh, what it was. DC three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's the uh, yeah plane mili that military time. version Back of in the C forty seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You. Uh, how were you, tell us about your first initial greeting at Fort Knox by, who, who greeted you, drill instructor? Drill instructor, we basic training, you know the thing. Mm -hmm. You make you stand on the little colored footprints, you know, the little areas that you stood to, to you know, be in place and, you know, you go through the basic, through the, you ever been to Fort Knox? Yes, yeah. Agony, misery, and heartbreak. Are you remember, remember those? <laughs> if you ain't never been through those, you ain't been to Fort Knox. Agony, agony. Misery and heartbreak. That was three mountains, hills and mountains. And whatever they say, like say heartbreak, it broke your heart. Misery, it hurt you. Uh, what's I said? Other misery, ag agony. It began to put you in agony. But all those things, it was all really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, misery, well, agony, misery, and heartbreak. Heartbreak is the one where you be climbing up to going up the mountain, be tired. Back in the end of the day, we had the M14. And that was a pretty heavy weapon. The M M1 was even heavier than that, but we only had the M14. And uh, that was pretty heavy to, to carry it a lot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And heartbreak is when you, you, you turn the corner on this mountain, you thought you was at the end of everything, and it broke your heart when you turned that corner, you looked straight up again. <laughs> and it made your heart break, but anyway. That's why they, they called it that. Uh -huh. Misery is when you, that was pretty much just like this. And you really, you know, it's hurting when you got yeah, finished. I got that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, how long was your basic training down there at Fort Knox? Two months. Two months, eight mm -hmm. weeks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, was it all physical or did you get training on rifle range? All or? that, all that, basic training. <laughs> Whatever you went through in basic training, you know, the gas mass, the whole nine yards, and you know, the training, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, after you get through with that training, you go to AIT. 
That's advanced. That's Vince military training. Mm -hmm. And I took that at Fort McClellan, Alabama. And at the time, I had a, I had a cousin that was a cap sergeant in the next company where I was in basic training. At Fort Knox? Fort Knox, yeah. He was a, in the next company from me, my cousin. And uh, the night I graduated, I didn't have my, there, most of the people that had their things where they'd be going or what they'd be doing, mm -hmm. I didn't have no paperwork at all. So when I went to the, to the orderly room to see if I can get a, because my family was there for my graduation, to see if I can get me a pass for the weekend, because it was on a Friday. Yeah. Matter of fact, like I said, this Friday is exactly, you know, the 50 years since that happened. But anyway, uh, am, I, am I skipping over something? Or just keep thinking, if, anyway. If you I'll skip, sure. you, you, go, you go anywhere you want to go, mm -hmm. Tom. So anyway, uh, uh, we uh, going over to the thing to see if I get me a weekend pass because I didn't have my paperwork on seeing where I'd be going or what I'd be doing. Or nothing. I didn't know nothing. So when I got back to the orderly room there, uh, and you know what? It's been hard for me to remember that, that word, orderly room, but now I can. But anyway, um, uh, and we went back and we tried to, my, my mother and my stepfather and my girlfriend and my cousin, see if I'd get me a weekend pass. So they told me that, well, too bad, your orders came today to where I'd be going, you know, what I'd be mm -hmm. going, at, going. So I was leaving the next morning at six o'clock, so I couldn't go to weekend, couldn't get me no weekend off. So anyway, I asked the people what was at Fort McClellan that they knew of, because didn't have what I'd be doing, just had on there my name and nine other guys, okay, on, on that piece of paperwork that I got. Mm -hmm. So I asked the guys around there, what was that for McClellan? They said the home of the WAC Corps, the WAC, that's what they used to call the women back then, the home of the WAC Corps, and Tigerland, you know what Tigerland is? That was infantry. Right. Okay, I'm going, okay, super basic, that's what we call it, super basic training, you know, going to AIT, you know, to that. So when uh, that next morning, we there was two bus loads of us, and I never ever paid no attention that it was only ten names on my paperwork, and we had sixty guys on these buses. You know what I mean? I didn't put the two, you know, put shit to, or try to, you know, make something out of whatever's going on. Just doing what the what they tell you to do. You understand what I'm saying? Make some sense out of it, huh? We wanted to make some sense out of it. <coughs> nah, we you just did what they told you to do. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so anyway, they sent me down there, and um, so I asked anybody at the, at the thing that at night uh, what was there, and they told me, well, I knew that uh, the White Corps and Permanent Party and the, and the military and the uh, uh, infantry. So I said, damn, we got to go through this uh, 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 infantry-like stuff, only super infantry now that I'm going through. You, they let you off in Tiger Land. You see these guys coming out of the boonies, dragging their guns and looking really rough like they've been through hell. You know, you know I'm crying about now, you know. Let me go home to mommy, you know. Not, but you know, you, you think about shit. But anyway, they said, they, they, they had, we were standing there with our bags and everything. And they said, we got some people going here to somewhere, I, they probably said chemical school, but I don't know. But they said, when we call your name out, grab your bags and get on the back of this deuce and a half here. You know what I mean? So they called, and they called my name out. I was, on the last, I was the last name on the list. And I'm so glad that I'm not gonna have to stay here to this infantry crap. And I don't know what I'm gonna be going and where I'm gonna be doing, I don't know nothing. So anyway, I grabbed my bags and threw them on the back of this truck. So they took us over to the other side of town, to the other side of the base, and put us in this building, big tall building, and you go in there and they got a day room and big color, had a, ain't never saw no big color television before over the time. You know, no big, large ones, you know. Never saw no shit like that before in my life at the time. Um, so anyway, we go in there and they tell us we're in chemical school and you know, so they gave us rooms and nice big mattresses and everything, you know, compared to the, the uh, basic training, flat, no mattress-like thing, you know what I mean? 
So anyway, I'm, I'm over there at the chemical school, didn't know nothing about no chemicals, didn't have a clue. And uh, here, I'm gonna get really personal here. Could barely read at the time, I'll tell you the damn truth. I went through here, anyway. Anyway, I ended up uh, taking this uh, uh, chemical staff specialist, is what it was called. I needed a, and they gave me, uh, I found out that they gave me a secret clearance, not a top secret, but a secret clearance and everything because of my chemical thing, which I didn't know nothing about. Uh, so anyway, I took these classes, and it even gets more interesting. I, I ran into a, old, into a football player that played with the Browns, and we and him became friends, and we was he had doing this basic, this, uh, eight, uh, not basic, but uh, military training. They do six months or something, they come in, and then they go home, you know. We, I didn't have to go through it. Anyway, his name was Ben Davis. Remember Angela Davis, the sure. activist? Yeah. I was in the military with her brother. With her brother. Yeah, and we came, became friends, and he was playing for the Browns at the time. And I went to see him a few times as I got out. But anyway, long story. I have a long story to my life. So anyway, his name was Ben Davis. I got to know him. And then by my last name being Motley, uh, I used to tell everybody the story that Motley was a cousin, which he probably wasn't. Who? Marion Motley, the football player. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. yes. My last name is Motley, so that sort of put us, a, you know, we don't have all this social media today, but anyway, I would have been busted. The good, it was a good story. <laughs> yeah, I would have been busted. He got me a lot of jobs throughout the years, it did. Just by using his name, these older guys that was, that was hiring, they know him and knew, you know, was a Browns fan, and they would hire me because of that. You know what I mean? Pretty much, I, I didn't push it. You understand what I'm saying? I just sort of hinted. Yes. Hey, got me what I was That's going. Right. You know. But anyway, and by me growing up, I used to work at the stadium, and I got to know a lot of people around there over the years. You know, around those things and shit like that. But uh, and then. Um, so you were in chemical school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Living in a good barracks with all the yeah nice everything. But anyway, uh, let's let's go through that. And it was, I was in a school where I told people I, I sort of remember the, the, the TV series Man from Uncle. Mm -hmm. Remember you ever remember seeing it? You probably don't. Uh, I okay. Anyway, remember how they used to have the people standing in the hallways with the guns, guarding the, the offices and the different things. That's the kind of school I was in. Okay. It had no windows, okay? It had people standing at the doorways with guns, at the classroom doors, you know what I mean? And it was chemical schools, so we, I'm trying to skip through a lot of this shit. We had to learn a nerve agent. You ever heard of the nerve agent, the blister agent they call it? Mm -hmm. Blister agent, they put these, bli make these blisters on there? You heard about that kind of mm -hmm. stuff? Anyway, I've had that spot, that shit put on me. Right here on my arm, I got a blister thing. To show you how it works, they call it a confidence course if you wanted to do it, you know what I mean? You, you know, pretty, and you're in the military, you do it, you know what I mean? You're a young man, you don't know your asshole from a hole in the ground. You're doing what these people are telling you to do, really, you know? Right. So, uh, I don't need to be cursing, do I? No, it's all right. Oh, okay. okay. I just, I kind of looked up at the camera. <laughs> and I get to talking, and I don't know when to stop sometimes. That's all right. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, I, uh, what was I, in, in AIT? And I had things that happened to me when AIT. I uh, stopped eating my fingernails. I went to this uh, uh, thing they had at the, the club one night. They had a hypnotist there, right? Got to hypnotize people and stuff like that. So anyway, I uh, almost got kicked out. I could have got caught martial because he hypnotized us that night and hypnotized, I don't know how I got to this story already, but anyway, he supposedly hypnotized us, me and a couple more guys, and we was playing, had been drinking, and um, we went through this hypnotized thing. <coughs> so, the guy hypnotized us to, we, we, we would, uh, wouldn't bite our fingernails and we wouldn't wake up unless there was an emergency, a life and death emergency, that kind of thing that we went through. I'm making a long story short. But anyway, uh, how did I get to this story already? 
when you're talking, you just run off at the mouth. That's all right. But anyway, uh, they was going to uh, uh, court-martial me for not showing up on my guard duty that night. I had fire watch. You don't know what fire watch is? Mm -hmm. You spent two hours up every night to guard the barracks where a fire, but we didn't have no fire things back in them days. But anyway, uh, I missed that. They couldn't wake me up. They threw water on me and they couldn't wake me up. So the next morning, <coughs> they had me down for court martial for uh, not showing up at my post, right? But anyway, they took me downstairs to talk to the captain about it. And so I told him the story about a guy had hypnotized us and said that we wouldn't wake up unless it was an emergency, that, 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 that. So anyway, he gave me a chance to prove myself. So he let me go up to the, to the, to the uh, OC or whatever, you know, the service club to see if I could catch this guy before he left town, which I did. So the guy wrote a letter out and told me they had hypnotized me. So that got me out of that. Okay, but anyway, that's one of my stories on life that happened to me. It's a longer story than that, but I'm just, I'm skipping through stuff. Well, you got through it, though. So anyway, I uh, you, didn't bite my fingernails no more after that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because he had hypnotized me, and that shit worked at the time, uh -huh. which uh, I, uh, there's a lot of story more to it than what I'm just telling you. I'm pretty much skipping through it, and, you know, over time, you, you lose track of uh, what goes on in your life back then, you know what I mean? So well, hard. You left us with the blisters on your elbow. I mean, on Tomorrow, your forearm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, anyway. what what other types of chemicals did they? Oh, and, oh, it's got I got a long story. I worked with uh, that. Plus, I worked with uh, 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 radiation stuff, uh, nuclear stuff. Mm -hmm. I worked with that. I used to have to go through the gas mask every go through the gas chamber every day before class because you had to have your your, ooh, I'm sorry, there's a woman over there. Mm -mm -mm. I'm sorry, there's a woman over there. And she's like, okay, let me stop. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, through my chemical school area, we had to go check our gas uh, mask out because we was in these rooms with different chem chemicals. Right. We had to make sure this stuff worked. So one time we was working with this nerve agent, GB, that's the nerve agent, that stuff that kills you from the I think they be having over there had on the TV that not too long ago with the people over in Iraq or when somebody was doing the chemical thing. Mm -hmm. And you call it GB? Yeah, it's a GB. That was the name of the of the nerve the, agent, right? And how did you administer that? Which the, the nerve agent? Yeah, they uh, or in the air? Or no, actually, they showed us. Well, we had to go through this thing with rabbits one time, right? With rabbits? Yeah, we had to kill one. And we had to save one. Let one of them die from the nerve agent, and then we'd take the other one and clean him up and suppose that, you know, saved him, you know. But anyway, it worked the other way around. The one that we were supposed to save died, and the one that we were supposed to kill, you know, lived or whatever. But anyway, that shit kind of happened. But anyway, make a long story short, let's go, let's jump through all of that basic thing and stuff. Uh, these are more stories to tell you a real, real quick story. When I got drafted, uh, Guys, was friends of mine back in the city, they was laughing, you know, joking me about me getting drafted, going to the military, right? So anyway, this one boy that laughed and joked with me, a couple of months after I'd been in there, I looked up one day, and here he comes. When I was in the military, one of the guys that laughed at me, he got busted, he got drafted a couple of months after I did. <laughs> he, he ended up in the same place that I was, and I ran into him over, you know, in the, uh, down there in Port McClellan. That was strange, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, I went through that school. Anyway, I... How long of a school was that? It was a two-month thing. Most of the military, one time you was in the military, everything was either two, two to nine months, two to, two to uh, three months, somewhere in that area. So anyway, like, like here goes the more of my story. I flunked the course, okay? The, the, uh, Class, uh, chemical staff specialist, I flunked it. Didn't know, didn't know my asshole from the whole ground, really. So anyway, they ended up putting me in another class, okay? They put me in uh, uh, chemical repairman, learning how to fix uh, gas uh, uh, flamethrowers and, and uh, gas masks, 
all that kind of the tank flame thors, all that we learn how to fix that kind of stuff how to clean up stuff from chemicals like the Asian orange and all that kind of stuff we learn how to clean it off tanks and off of trucks and off of us they learn taught us how to make our own uh, chemical suits to keep the chemical you know with the how to uh, take your clothes and put it in this solution they taught you how to make and uh, to stop the chemicals from getting on you and stuff that kind mm-hmm. of thing you know. it's very complicated but anyway they taught you that kind of stuff and taught you how to fix stuff anyway that's how I ended up being a, like a repairman you know that kind of thing but uh, I did that passed that so when I went to Vietnam I went over there atta- on a tap I didn't skip through a whole lot of shit but anyway that's so, a, uh, so you you graduate from this training, yeah, mm-hmm. and that is when would you say sixty seven, well sixty eight, first part of sixty eight, um, and I uh, when got my thirty day leave. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, uh, I'm going to say something that's off track. Like what? Those are some big pigeons. <laughs> but anyway, I'm looking at the pigeons on <laughs> I, and I grew up around pigeons in the area that I grew up in in Cleveland. Yeah. It was a bunch of, and those were some big fidgets. But anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I, sorry. Got off, I so get off track like tell that. Tell me sometimes. when you graduated, though. Huh? From, from, what? from this training at McClellan. Okay. Uh, That's in Rucker. Oh, wait a minute. Where is that at in Alabama? Fort McClellan, Alabama. Yeah, Fort, yeah. Fort McClellan. Okay. Uh, Anniston, Alabama. Anniston, mm-hmm. right, okay. You know, Fort McClellan don't exist no more. No, I didn't know that. No, it's gone. Yeah. They tore it down, and they got a big, they got a big thing going on down there, too with uh, the uh, chemicals and stuff that they uh, used on that base for all those years. Oh, yeah. That, big, that base was around forever. And uh, right now they got a big class action lawsuit going on down there. People that worked there for years uh, trying to get money from, you know, from these cancers and stuff that right. they then it came up with, which I'm a part, I, I'm going I'm to put in for it. I'm a part of all that. Were you exposed while you were there? Everything. To Agent Orange? Everything. Any chemical you could probably think of that the military had to do anything with, I was a part of. You know, like I told you, the Asian or the, uh, nerve. the blister, that's blister agent. Asian, the blister, the, the nerve agent, I'd have been dead if I'd have got that on me. <laughs> that's gonna kill you, but this, this blister agent, what it does, it's a decapacitator. It makes you, they makes like, you know, they got a thing in the military, it takes so many people to take care of one person. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they figure if they put that blister stuff on you, it would take 10 people to take care of that one person. You know, that kind of thing. Sure. So that's one of the things. And they used that in World War II a lot, that the blister agent. It was used yeah, so over that's there. a blister agent. That's not the nerve. No. Yeah. I'd have been dead if I had. We, well, we did use it. Plus, like I say, we used to fly out. Plus, we used to use like, uh, 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 radiation, uh, chemo- radiation stuff, too. You know, we used to fly out to these caves or whatever you want to call it. They have radiation put down in different spots and you had, you had those badges and everything that would light up and stuff if you went to, got too many rays. What they used to call it, radiation mm-hmm. thing, that kind of thing. Now, was that down there in Alabama yeah. that you did that? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like I told you, the base don't exist no more because yeah. of the chemicals. Yeah. So you... You got a 30-day leave, right? After I got out of there, yeah. Before I went to Vietnam, yeah. Yeah. And what'd you do on your 30-day leave? Try to get all pussy out. Or, see, I can't even talk like that. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, you want to? What did you, what, see, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, big city. Okay, it wasn't like we went out and played in the farmlands. And, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, did you go home to Cleveland? Yeah. Oh, okay. On your thirty-day leave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, here go another real quick story. When I was in the AIT and from McCollin, my parent, my people is from Alabama. My father's from a place called Collinsville, Alabama. Collinsville. Yeah, that was about sixty miles from where I was, and they, they it didn't. And, I, and at that time, didn't nobody know I was in the service. You know, my family. We didn't. We didn't have the there's connections like we do today. You know what I mean? Like uh, my stepmother and my stepfather, my father, they didn't even know until I was in the service until I got out of the service. I only did 21 months, okay? I got drafted, you get drafted for two years. When I, let, when I went to Vietnam, 
And I left when I when I left. Well, when I went to Vietnam, they told me when I left Vietnam, if I had uh, 90 days or less, I could get straight out. So when I left Vietnam, I only had 90 days. So I, at the time, they was giving you up to six months early out. So I only had that day. So when I left Vietnam, I say less than three days. I was out of the military. Nothing to do with the military no more. Because they told me I had to go through no reserve training. You know, nothing mm -hmm. like that. But uh, yeah. Well, when you got your thirty-day leave, though, or whenever did you before go I went visit, to Vietnam? Uh, did you go visit relatives in Alabama? Did you say? Oh, well, I get back to that. At I, this, AIT, when you were this is before the thirty-day leave. Right. I uh, had a weekend pass. <clears throat> and back in the sixties. It wasn't a great thing for a black man to be running around <laughs> in Alabama in the dark, <laughs> okay? And uh, I uh, got me a bus ticket, and I went to my father. I didn't call, wasn't no phone ready to be calling, you know, you wasn't like it is like it. So anyway, I got on the bus one night, and back then they didn't have like the bus station. This particular bus thing that I got off on, it was in front of the, the barber shop, and at that time of night, by the time I got there, it was after 12, wasn't nothing open, wasn't no lights, wasn't nothing. You understand what I'm saying, back mm -hmm. in them days? But anyway, I go to my grand, my mother, I took the bus down there, because I knew the area pretty good from growing up, visiting for the, you know, my teenager when I was a young man, you know, visiting there, so I knew the area. And it's one of those little towns where one street light, and it was blinking, it wasn't no red and yellow, it was a blinking light. Back in them days, you know what I mean? But anyway, I got down there after 12 o'clock, and uh, my stepfather, my, st my grandfather rather, they didn't know who was coming in, knocking on their door that time, but I, my grandfather come to the door with a shotgun in his hand, you know, back then, you know, but anyway. I, I made it there safely, it shocked the shit out of them, because they were, didn't know I was coming. You just didn't bounce on nobody back in them days like that, you know? back in the 60s. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah. So you got your 30-day leave now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to Cleveland. And No, my 30-day leave? Oh, uh, yeah, I went up to Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. I went home. And went home uh, for the week, for that month, before I had to go to Vietnam. They gave me that, that leave, yeah. And you, did you, you didn't get in any trouble or anything while you're on 30-day leave, did you? No. No. Mm -hmm. So you... I, uh, I tell people to the day, uh, I'm a 70 year old black man that grew up in a big city. I ain't never spent a night in a jail in my life. I've spent a couple, the longest I've been in jail was six and a half hours. And that was for some tickets I hadn't paid, dri driving things. And they ended up throwing one of them away because one of them was so old, so the statute of limitations. But I end up being in jail six and a half hours, and there's a story to that too. But we ain't going to get a, that's too much detail. Just the, you know, you know so things that happened prior to that time. You know. Well, let's go back to uh, your 30 days leave is up, and where are you going now? What you mean? I went home and. Uh, no, after your. You 30 went, days? Yeah, after. Vietnam. You, oh, where did you leave for Vietnam? Uh, from? Oakland, out to Oakland. So you flew, flew to Oakland? Yeah, we got on a plane here in Cleveland and flew out to Oakland and, and we lived from there. We, uh, I guess they go through the little things of getting you checked in and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, went to Oakland there. Uh, now, did you know who you were going to be assigned no, to? They no. just said you're going Una, to be unattached. I'm going to unattached. Put me on a tiger, a flying tiger airline and sent my ass to Vietnam. So you went to Oakland and then from Oakland to where? From Oakland, we flew from Oakland to uh, uh, Alaska, Anchorage. Yeah. We left from Anchorage, went to Japan, went from Japan to Vietnam. Where did you land at in Vietnam? Uh, Long Bend. Long Bend? Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Uh, what was your... When you got when you got off the plane, what was your feeling? Uh, do you remember? It was it didn't know when the fuck I was, and I'm seeing all these funny looking people running around with these little sandpan hats on, and I'm trying to learn everything I can learn as I went along. And uh, I took words from the 
you, you sort of listen to the older guys around that's been around for a while. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know my asshole from a hole in the ground. You know, I was just there. You know, trying to do what it, whatever, whatever the uh, sergeants, the captains, whoever it was, told me to do. Where did they assign you to? I mean, well, after I got there, yeah. I stayed there at, at Long Bend. That was the receiving station. For anybody, I guess, who wasn't attached to nobody. And I guess you uh, waited till you got picked up by somebody, which I got picked up by the first log. You know, so. Uh, How long was it before you were picked up? About, uh, about a week or so. Get so. that long? I don't know. So you were picked up by the first all log. Did, all I did was down there was burn shit while I waited. Is that right? And, and try to get all the pussy I can get. Seriously, we, yeah. They had girls coming. You know, they had little places where some of the Vietnamese girls would come over there, sneak on there, and you can buy you some pussy. But that's how it was. And you were uh, burning uh, shit. Is that you, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. That's what you did. You didn't have nothing else to do, so they. Had you out, you know, cleaning out the shit. You know, they had right. those 55 gallon drums, half a 55 gallon drum underneath the out outhouse, and you would have to pull it out, put the diesel fuel in there. Uh, uh, not, you know, diesel fuel. Uh, Kerosene. Yeah, diesel fuel, really. Yeah. Uh, and uh, grade four, I think. Yeah. It was. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's called, uh, I got your name. Well, out of fact, it's helicopter pilot. It's helicopter uh, uh, fuel. Fuel, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how long did you do that? Well, about a week or two. I forgot. Exactly. And who picked you up? The first log. First log. And uh, and where did you go to be? Went to a place called Zion, and I went there for maybe a month or so, maybe. And where's Zion at? In Vietnam, I, I couldn't tell you no exact place. I mean, is that all I know is in Vietnam, okay. North Vietnam. Uh, and how long, how long were you there, and what did you do? In that particular you? base, mm -hmm. maybe a month. I did whatever they told me to do. I had no certain, you know, whatever they had going on that day. That's what I did. Now, have you been assigned a weapon or anything at this time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they give you I'm, for some reason. I'm going to slide. Like anyway, this thing like the rules. It's yeah. moving like, anyway. <laughs> I sit at home in my home. I have uh, these office chairs, you know, like the ones you see in these offices, the tall with the high backs, and I can lay back, uh, you know, yeah. and, I'm, and this thing moving a little bit. And it's got me to make, make me feel I want to roll, roll it a little bit. Yep. Uh, so you were assigned what type of weapon? Oh, when I got there, I was used to using the M14. Uh, they, in the orderly room, in the, uh, it's, what the this wasn't called the orderly room, but it's called the armory, where they had the weapons. They had M16. This is when, when I went in the military, this is when the M16 got put into action, because it was brand new. Because I took my training with M14, okay? And I didn't get an M M16, or even try M16, until I got my couple of weeks of training they gave me for Vietnam. They give you a couple of weeks of training to get you acclimated to the weapons and uh, mm -hmm. you know, the Vietnam sort of life thing. Right. You went to this phony made camp to, you know, Vietnam like stuff build up. Anyway, you did that before you went over there to learn what you had to do. But anyway, when you got over there and you went to the armory to pick up your weapon, <coughs> They had all these weapons laying around in there, you know, on the thing there. And I was so used to the M14. And they asked, I asked them, I said, uh, they asked, I asked them, could you have anything? You know, they, they pretty much said, you can have just about anything you want back there. So anyway, I saw this M14 back there that I, like I've never saw before. It had a bipod, pistol grip, you know, specialized uh, shoulder thing, with, you know, stock thing. And uh, they had a, a gun back there, and I asked them what they, I said it was the M14, but I didn't know what, the, it was the M14A1 with a bipod and a pistol grip, okay? And I said, can I have that? And they said, yeah. So that's what I carried in Vietnam. I'm one of the few people that carried, a, at that time, that carried a 14. What caliber did they shoot? M14, uh, 7.62 millimeter. Seven you don't forget stuff like that. Using the military, you don't forget stuff like that. Uh, seven, four, seven point six two. Seven point six. That's what most of your 
most of your weapons even today, the uh, AK-47, uh, most of those, that's what they shoot. Because when I was in Vietnam, I found out one thing. They could shoot our, our ammo, but we couldn't shoot theirs. Because their, their ammo was too powerful for IM-16 or IM-14. It was too powerful. It might blow it up or something. How much said. did that M-14 weigh? Pretty heavy weapon, isn't it? Uh, a couple of pounds. I mean, it was, I forgot, 7.62 millimeter was a bullet size. I'd say about 14 pounds. It was mm -hmm. pretty, pretty heavy compared to what the M16 were. Right. The M1, the M1 was even heavier than that. Because mm -hmm. I remember carrying our M14 about with a, uh, when you carry it in port arms like this, holding it, you cramped. Your arms was cramping before you got through marching around with that thing in your arm. So, um, how long were you at the first base you were at? In, in, over there in that place? I maybe a month. I, you know, I don't remember the times. No, no, I just a project. Well, about a month or so. Then I got sent from there to a place. See, back then we had a lot of racial stuff going on. So I think we had had some things going on, some fights. So what they did, they took all the black boys and sent them off to different places. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So they sent me to this place called ZR. Fuloy. Fuloy. You sort of tied up. So I went to this place. So anyway, somebody ended up fragging one of the officers. You know what I mean by fragging them? Mm -hmm. Throwing a grenade on this one captain or something. So they ended up shipping us out to some place else. And they told me I was going to this thing called a contact team. Okay? And I asked questions. You know, you try to find out what's going on at this contact team area. And they told me that you was going to hell. Okay? That's pretty much what they... You know, you're going where there's a lot of fight, okay? Which, anyway, I got there, and this is around the Tet Offensive, right before the Tet Offensive of 68 going into 69. So anyway, we get there, and uh, after a while, we find all kinds of things happen. But anyway, we find out that uh, the, the vehicle, this is when they started the Tet, and they was hitting us every day for two or three times, maybe waking us up, putting us to sleep, rockets and mortars and things like that. We got that for quite a while, up, you know. So those kind of things was happening. But during the quiet times, we did our thing and smoked much marijuana as we could smoke, you know. When you say you had a lot of uh, racial problems going on there, mm -hmm. uh, where, where, are you at, where are you at when you're having those problems and what kind of problems? Vietnam. Vietnam. Just all the over? Whole the, whole, the whole world was about going through that kind of stuff back mm -hmm. then. You know, uh, we had race fights and, you know, bar, into little clubs and st things like that was going on off and on. It wasn't a, you know, like overpowering or nothing like that. So, you know, shit happens here and there, you know. Well, uh, were you, they weren't, you weren't killing each other, were you? The whites and blacks? Well, no, basically. The only people back then was getting killed was captains and lieutenants or some ocean. That's what you mean by fragging. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the ones. What happens is when things like that happen is, is that your your lieutenant or captain that's fairly new there that don't know his asshole from a hole in the ground, they would be doing things like putting in people in danger when they should have listened to people been there. But they didn't they want to do it like the book. Mm. The book would get your ass killed if you was in the military, you know. Right. And anybody in the military to tell you that that book you can't go by that book. You use it as a basis. You understand what I'm saying? It's a it's a beginning. You know what I mean? You don't use it everything. Every, you know what I mean? So that's what got a lot of people killed over there because there was a danger to more people than just one. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did anyone ever get caught that uh, actually that I knew personally? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One yeah. Not really. Yeah. Not that I knew of, didn't nobody... Most of the time they weren't caught, they weren't... Yeah, I wasn't caught, no. Didn't nobody tell. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So they even shipping you somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm trying to slide this damn chair. Um, were, you, were you actually sent into the, as they call the bush, and the things of that in heaven? Uh, we had to... I was in a bush. I was in a bush. I drove convoys for a while. And we had to fly out to Lil Z's 
to change gun tubes and stuff like that. It was seven of them. To okay. change what? Gun tubes. Okay, what we did was, my, at the end, by the time I, I stopped moving me around, I was in a place called Fukvin, Fukvin Province. But anyway, I was on this thing called a contact team. It was seven of us. A captain, I mean a sergeant, and a lieutenant was our head boys, you know, head, head guy. We had a sergeant money, and, a, and a, <laughs> believe it or not, we had a sergeant money, and a captain, a sergeant, wait, captain money, and a sergeant uh, uh, money and Nichols. Nichols, another guy's name, Nichols money, you okay? <laughs> yeah, one of them named Nichols and one of them named money. But anyway, those are, one of them was a lieutenant, first he was a, a, a warrant officer, actually, and the other one was a sergeant. Okay. The sergeant, both of them was drunks, okay? They were what? Drunks, <laughs> alcoholics, <laughs> you know. Yeah, this is Vietnam, baby, you, was you in Vietnam? No. Well, you know, you, <laughs> it was a whole different world, a whole different world, but anyway, uh, they was pretty much there. And we all, uh, the other five guys, one was a heavy equipment mechanic, one was an artillery mechanic, one was a small arms mechanic, one was a heavy uh, gun, he, he changed gun tubes and big guns, howlers, uh eight inches, all the guns that you could find over there, big guns, we changed the gun tubes on it. Then my job was to fix anything that had to do with chemicals, like uh, flamethrowers, um, gas masks, if I had to do that. But see, they, they didn't really use my particular job over there much. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much helped everybody else. I drove the convoys to take go get our equipment and different things, and gun tubes and things that we had to go pick up from the bases. Mm -hmm. Now there's tons of nukes. The thing, so I drove convoys back and forth. I did that. Uh, plus I drove the wrecker. You ever drove a wrecker before? No. Okay, I drove the wrecker. That's the boom and all of that. I used to drive it backwards. I don't know why I couldn't drive it, or operate that thing facing it. You understand? I drove it anyway. That's how it was back then. Mm -hmm. You would. Uh, you flew on helicopter. Yep. We had a we had a helicopter appointed to us. So when we had to go out to the LZ, little LZs, and the LZ was a. About a thing was 50 yards around or so that they put barware around, and someone was in the middle of the jungle. <coughs> and it's a, it's a helicopter over there called a loach. It's a small helicopter with a, it was a four seater, two in the front, two in the back. And it was a little, we called it the loach, but anyway, that was the name of it. And that's what we used to fly out to the little LZs. And they would drop us down, we uh, let us out, then the helicopter would take off. And then uh, the big Chinook would come in with the gun tube, hang it down on the bottom of it there, and bring it over to us. We'd be the, took the other one apart, or took it loose and everything. And we'd get the guy to pick it up and move that over out our way. Then the guy would bring the gun tubes in, and uh, I would be down there, guide the, the helicopter, the, you know, to get it, to put it onto the, to the stand for the for the guns, right. one five fives or whatever size it was, that kind of thing. That's what we did. That's how I ended up getting into the bush, out there. I, when, I, when you go out there, you you never been in one of those things. It's the weirdest thing, because you got a jungle around you, right? Mm -hmm. And you look, you look up and you see these big holes, like tunnels, going down through the jungle, and that's what you saw. It wasn't, you couldn't see nothing else but that hole in the middle of the jungle. You know what I mean? But uh, we go change the gun tubes and then the, the helicopter come back and pick us up, you know, and take us back to base. That's what we did. We changed gun tubes on tanks. Uh -huh. Those big, uh, how, uh, eight inches, nine inches, all those, those big guns. They right. used to put them on tanks. And those tanks without, those, without the big gun tube on it, them motherfuckers would move like what? Those big tanks that we dried up, you know, you young man, you do all kinds of stuff. Anyway. Um, were you exposed to any Agent Orange while you were there? Uh, excuse me. I put my feet on the ground. 
Yes. Yeah. Because that's what it was. It was you wasn't no special spots. They didn't have no sign that says Agent Orange. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. If they if you went over there and you walked around in the grass and, and in Vietnam it's jungle. This you know, it ain't like running around out here, running around, you know. Especially back then. It was really bad back then. You know what I mean? You see the people running around chasing the rats to get them for dinner, you know, that kind of shit, Vietnam. Were you ever in Saigon? Yep, all over the whole, pretty much Saigon. Anytime I had to go down to Tonsonuk, Tonsonuk's an area right next to Saigon, all that stuff. And if you got down there on the weekends, like Thursday or Friday, you didn't come back. You stayed down there for the weekend. You did that on purpose, get you some pussy. You know, that was a big thing about Vietnam. Pussy and having fun. Now, We've heard some. I'm sorry, I'm cursing. We heard some stories about uh, race relations there in Saigon during oh, yeah. that period of time, where uh, hmm. they had whole sections where white people, white, white guys hung out. Huh? Same, just like it was in America at the time. Yeah. They went through that kind of shit. It was sort of calming down after I got there during the '68, '69 thing. It was a little bit, a little bit, not as bad as it was when I first got there. Mm -hmm. You know. Which I, you know, I mean, it's quite, I'm, I'm the type of person, it's the person involved in, in things like, you know, that gets involved like that. You know what I mean? I pretty much. Did you have very many white guys when you were out traveling to uh, repair the tubes or replace it was only, the tubes? It was, I was the only black person in the whole, th yeah. in that group that was with me. When I first got there, there was a black guy, but he went home after a few weeks, or a year, maybe, I don't know, not a year, but a few weeks. How did you personally get along with the white people there while you were in Vietnam? Had them. They have no problems at all. Yeah. Not really. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a different person than the, because, I don't know, maybe because I grew up in a big city, I don't know. I uh, pretty much, hey, I lived. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I had a ball. I'm going to tell you the truth. I had a ball in Vietnam. I lived downtown with the people sometimes. I did the things that most people, you know, I pretty much got along, you know. Mm -hmm. I could go downtown and party and <laughs> I tell people, I partied with the goose. Well, I mean, with, the, with the Viet, with the Kong, I, things we did, that's what we did in Vietnam. You know, Vietnam was a... You hear about those, some of the harder drugs than marijuana. Do you know? I'm going to tell you, I was over there 364 days, okay? Uh, never run, I ran, never ran into no cocaine, no heroin. But every other kind of drug, I probably did. Probably a little bit here, a little bit there. Never saw no heroin. After, see, when, I, when you was in Vietnam, things come over in, in waves. Mm -hmm. The new people that came from the United States over to us, they bought us the new whatever going on in the United States, okay? Right. And at the time, there was a pill called, but not to, anyway, but not tall. It was a sleeping pill that we used to use over in Vietnam a lot. You could get it very readily over there. And that's one of the biggest pills, drug pills that we had over there. We smoked marijuana like it was going out of style, mm -hmm. which I, t I don't make no, no lies about it. I still smoke marijuana mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I, don't, I don't have pain nowhere, but go ahead. I was gonna ask you, you were there when Martin Luther King was Yep, when he was dead, yep. Him Tell when King died and- When, when that, Robert that, Kennedy died too. When that old, uh, the, the Mal racist guy. Malcolm X? No, the racist guy, the white guy. He was a racist uh, back then, the uh, big mayor or governor or something. Wallace, Wallace, George, yeah. George Wallace. George Wallace, yeah. when he was doing his thing. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you heard that Martin Luther King uh, Jr. was ass assassinated. We, uh, they quarantined us to base. I was curious about that. Yeah. They quarantined us to base. They wouldn't let us. And I was in Vietnam when that happened. I know. <coughs> they quarantined the base that particular time because of that. They didn't want us to start no fighting and riots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What base were you on when that happened? Probably in Phu Vien. I don't remember Phuc exactly. Vien. I don't remember. I was in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then by me, by me getting older and being older now, it's things that your brain don't keep in. You understand what I'm saying? 
Now, did, uh, was there any uh, reaction when Robert Kennedy was assassinated also? Yeah, but not as bad. Yeah, yeah. Not as, as... That was too much later. Not, as, not, as, not when King died, no. It's, okay. it's a whole different story. Yeah. That was a white man. It, when it came to the black people, that, you know, it was... Mm. It wasn't that, to me, you know. So how long did they keep you quarantined? I don't know, probably 30, I don't know. But see, people ask me things like that. I, even back then, you couldn't, couldn't have told you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I don't, hey, whatever was going on right now, that's the only thing that matters. I see. You understand what I'm saying? No, I understand that, but mm -hmm. it's, I think it's important to ask you. Anyway. I was in the war and I was doing my job. I did what they told me to do. And I keep telling people, I had a ball in Vietnam. I, parties and try to, like I say, what you did over there, smoke reefer and get high just trying to find all the pussy you could. What if about could, alcohol? That too, drink. I think, I think as long as I was, I was in there, Vietnam a year, I might have drank a glass of water the whole year, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember that one. We, he was, so I was with class one. Class one first, the uh, support division I was living with mm -hmm. was class one. That's the people that fed you. That's okay, right. the that's people that fed your class one. Yeah, that's one that took care of all the food and all of that. So we we pretty much had barbecues every Friday night, steaks, shit like that. And um, we used to go to the different service club things over there. They used to have the USOs and people like that had these little things over there. I used to buy a T-bone steak dinner for two dollars, you know, French fries, T-bone steaks, and and a one steak sauce. You know what I mean? That's what they used to, things we used to have. Have over there, and by me living with class one, we always had the best food. Did, did you said? Uh, did you have any entertainment from movie stars? Oh, yeah, there were movies. We had to, movie stars come over there. Yeah, yeah uh, people, people like that. But mostly, my thing was the, the little service, the U U USO girls, things like that. We had places, you know, right? like I told you, I had a ball in Vietnam. I ain't gonna lie to nobody. I partied and tried to fuck everything I could. Did you come in contact with any of the uh, D.C. or North Vietnamese? Yep, party with them too. You did? Yep, sure did. I ain't gonna lie about it. Tell with the V.C., with the V.C., yep, party with them too. How did you know they were V.C.? They, they told you. They, you, you, you. If you didn't know, you was dead. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> I mean, see, it was a whole... By me being a black man in Vietnam, and uh, the word for black man is me dad. Uh, What's the word? Me dad. Mm -hmm. me, uh, but anyway, uh, we, we, we lived in that extra world, you know, compared to what a white man did in that world. You know, they treated us more like a brother, a family member in a way than the, than the, than the white man. Y'all paid, y'all paid more for pussy and things like, I'm serious, it's, that's how it was. I paid two dollars for them, y'all go pay 20, 30, you know, that's how it was back in the day, you know what I mean? But, hey, like I say. Well, where were you at when you were drinking or uh, having a party with VC and- Okay, uh, downtown. Okay, in my base that I was on, right? <coughs> Uh, we had these guys, now my brain ain't working at the second right here now. You were at, uh, mm -hmm. at Fuvin? Yeah, That's the base at Fuvin, that was a party place, okay. pretty much. But right in the middle of our base, we had an Arvin compound. You know what an Arvin compound is? That's, That's the, the Vietnamese, Vietnamese. That's the Vietnamese Army. Right, Arvin. Yeah, South Vietnam. Yeah, South Vietnamese. And the, uh, what's the name of the, uh, my brain, uh, the name of what, sir? I'm trying to think of the name of this group of guys. Military, military, uh, damn, what's the name of them? Uh, the uh, criminal intelligence? No, 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 well, no. Anyway, they work with the Vietnamese, personally with the Vietnamese. MACV, I don't yeah. know if you oh, heard okay. it, yeah. called yeah. MACV. Yeah, MACV. Sure. Okay, sure. they work personally with the Vietnamese. Military Air Command, I mean, Military Army Command. You know that? Anyway, they work personally MACV. with the Vietnamese. They had a thing where they, they all lived together and they pretty much was a part of, they are pretty much more part of their army than ours in a way. Anyway, those guys, the particular guys we had on our base, 
right in the middle of our base, we had an Arvin compound. It was a Vietnamese compound right in the middle of our, our own base, right? Mm -hmm. And those Vietnamese, their families and family members live with them right there, right? So at night, <laughs> they would let us sneak over there and not, you know, everybody didn't know it. But anyway, sneak over there and, you know, we'd get high and have some girls over there selling pussy, or shit like that. So we used to go over there and party. And I would get, you know, that kind of thing. Right in the middle of our base, so we didn't have to go off the base to find this. It was right there, we could get high and everything. But anyway, I got a couple of uh, helicopter pilots high a couple of times, first time they ever got high, smoked marijuana back then, you know. But anyway, one guy told me when I saw him the next time, he said it's the best flight he ever had. <laughs> he had to smoke some marijuana and got high. But uh, yeah, but anyway, that was right in the middle of our base, our urban compound. So my particular group of guys, seeing that we fix stuff, everybody wanted to know us because we could help them out, do things for them, and get something fixed that they had to wait on, you know, that kind of thing. So we, we had a pretty much open door thing with us, with my group of guys, you know what I mean? And um, we did things like you find in movies. We go, like we had a lieutenant, one lieutenant that was uh, a part of another thing, anyway. He used to take us and we used to go, we needed like plywood or, or something. He'd help us go rigor norting, we call it. We call it rigor norting. Go lock somebody's heels up because he was a lieutenant and take it basically, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's what we did. It was, it was something like you see in a movie, I'm serious. My time in Vietnam, and like I keep telling people, I had a good time overall, you know, but the fact is, I wanted to get the hell out of there. You know, out of hell out of Dodge. We call it getting the hell out of Dodge mm -hmm. when we left Vietnam, you know, but. Uh, Did you, uh, have you stayed in contact with anybody you nope. served with in Vietnam? Nope, they ain't saw a person since, since the day I left them. You know, I would love to see one or two of them, but I, I, I can't even remember their names now. It's been so long, there's only one guy Two guys that I got pictures of in that picture that I remember their name. One game, his name was Timothy, and that's the only reason I can remember. I got a picture of him, I know who he is. And they had a guy named Medley. Okay? I, his picture's in there, I know that it, that's Medley. If I ever see him again, I know I can call. But most of those guys. Do you remember Nichols and. Who's, I'm sorry. Do you remember Nichols? Yeah, those two. And uh, yep, the sergeant. Sergeant and the cap. Because the only problem the reason I remember their name, because one was named Nichols and one was named Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> yep, sure was. At, uh, mm -hmm. I've had things happen to me when I was in Vietnam. I'll uh, tell you a situation when I was uh, in Cleveland growing up. I was going to, we, back, we didn't have school buses back in them days. We had city buses we took to school. And I used to, take, I used to ride the bus with this one guy, right? I mean, him would talk every morning. He went to a different school than I did. The day that I was uh, leaving Vietnam, I was getting off the bus, and he was getting on the bus. When in, you were in, leaving? In Vietnam. In Vietnam. The set, this guy that I met in Cleveland, right. growing up, yeah. on the bus, the same situation, the bus, in Vietnam. Yeah. Ain't that something? You're getting off, son, he's getting off. He was, he was, I was leaving Vietnam. He was leaving. And he was coming. Yeah. But I ran to that man over there, after, the, after, after he got out of Vietnam and everything, uh, we ran, we, you know, got in touch with each other later on in life, yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's one of the, well, I wasn't really in Vietnam with him. I was yeah. on my way in, he was on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so, when do you leave Vietnam? July 68, 69, rather. July of 69. Mm -hmm. When you so, went to Vietnam, it, you got, your term was one, one year. Okay. Okay, and actually, they gave me one day short, if you got over there, uh, on one day, you left a day shorter than your, right. your, your day, you know, so anyway. I was about two weeks after the first man landed on the moon, right, when I left Vietnam. I had, when I was, cause I... That was, uh, that was July the 20th. Uh, 20th, 20th or so. The 20th. Yeah, because I left the 28th, 29th. The 69th. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I took, I was telling the Viet, matter of fact, I got a picture. If you had those pictures, I can show you some pictures of, uh, the time when I was, let me, is there pictures right there? Could you hand me that real quick? 
Thank you. I'd right, probably round this tab here. That that woman right there, that's my that's my mama, son. She took care of me pretty much, did what I told her to do pretty much. And then the little boy that's standing there, that was my boy, son. Any time, my boy, son. This is my mama, son. This is my boy, boy, son. And this is a friend of mine. And um, I had a little, I had a little hut downtown. And the little woman took care of me and shit, you know. When you say downtown, in the, the little the village, the village was next. The village that was was next to us. Our, our fence, our barbed wire fence, ran next to the village. And the name of that village? Uh, uh, Fukvin. Oh, Fukvin Province. Okay. Fukvin. Uh, what was your base called then? Fukvin. Fukvin also. Yeah, yeah okay. it was the base. It wasn't. It was sitting ne right next to a village. Uh, right next to the, the town that's right there, okay. Bookvin Province. And you had a little place downtown? Yeah, a little... little room, a yeah. house? Mm -hmm. A little place down there. Yeah. And uh, I always wondered what happened to them. What happened to them? Look at that old Vietnam veteran there, but anyway. Now this was, uh, was this place here overrun during the Tet Offense? No, not, not when I was there, no. It, if it did, it happened right much later. We. It was pretty well, this wasn't no small place, it was a nice area. And the bridge was right down the road that we was guarding, they was guarding. That's it was part, a big red one. That's part of the Second, big that's part of second Corps, isn't it? Uh, Saigon? Don't get me the line. But I know the uh, particular, it was two, we had two outfits during the time I was at this base. We had the big red one for one time, they was there for a while. And then we had the first, first air cab. Mm -hmm. You know, with the helicopters and all that shit. Uh -huh. <coughs> and it was... <coughs> Fuvin. They was pretty much guarding that bridge. What bridge? The Song Bay Bridge, that's what the name of it. Song Bay. Song Bay. Song Bay Bridge. Yeah. And this is right on the outside of my barracks, right here. It probably not that just come out to shower or something. Ran into a friend of mine, so we stopped. And yeah, turn that around so you okay, can see it. This right here. And you see, okay, on my, on my arm, there's a black thing here. That's a, we uh, took our shoe boot strings and made these uh, uh, bands for our arm, and we call them the DAP. They're called Beautiful. Okay, that was our thing back then, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And some guys still wear them today. I lost mine and he never put one back on. But see that little black thing around my wrist mm -hmm. right there? Yeah, I do see it, yeah. That's a boot string that's been laced, been braided. Now who's that fellow with it? I can't remember names. Okay. Now, this girl, right, this is when I graduated out of basic. And her name? Her name is Sharon. And she looked just like a famous person, if you, if you knew this famous person. She looked a lot like Dionne Warwick. Uh -huh. Back then, you know who Dionne Warwick is. Sure. Yeah. Okay, she looked a lot like her. I went with that girl for a while. I wonder. Well, I always wonder what she moved out of town. But anyway, long story. That was just a quick. Now, remember that? Wait a minute. No, oh, that's not the picture of Melvin. Now, this is just a bunch of guys. We was all turn that around. Sir. That was a bunch of guys, and they had a pool table in this little area that we hung out at, and shot pool and just a bunch of Vietnam veterans, me guys hanging around. Well, I noticed that uh, you don't look like you're too upset with each other. There's, no, he's uh, hot, smoking reefer. Black and white guys here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We, we, excuse me, the, 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 the race thing, after a while, it pretty much subsided. It, it went away all of a sudden, it just went away. We didn't, that, all we did was Get high all day. Now, now, who, who are those now these guys right here. Now, remember I told you it was five of us, other than the lieutenant and the sergeant. Yeah. These are the five guys. Uh, At, uh, this guy right here, he was a uh, from Hawaii or Oriental guy, and we had a hillbilly and a couple of city boys from different places around, and that's me in the middle. Turn that around. That's on the, that's on the top of our bunker. We made our own bunkers. And where's that at? At, at Fukvin. At Fukvin. Mm -hmm. yep. Most of these pictures you see in this, 
is when I was at Fruitvale. Wait a minute. Let's see what else I got on here. I think we. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, we went through all of these. <coughs> we went through those yesterday. Yep. Right, anyway. Come on. Let's see what this is. Yeah, that's all. Yep. So, you you had this place down in town. Did you uh, did you rent that from somebody or did yeah. the man take it over? No, we, we you gave him a few bucks. It wasn't no big deal. You no had it with a couple other guys though. No, that was mine. Just by yourself. No. I'm a, I'm a, well. I'm not a person who's gonna hang with a bunch of people. I want to be by myself. If anything happens, I ain't got to worry about nobody else but me. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's even how it works in life. You know, you ain't got to be nobody else to tell on you. But anyway, yeah. I had a fun. Anyway, yeah. and I lived with, I mean, like I hung out with the people and pretty much drank bum de bum all day. I'm still <laughs> a little surprised that uh, you were able to, um, lack of a better word, fraternize with the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. Ah, just got to be there to know. Yeah. Just got to be there. At, uh, and, and like I told you. And they, what they had, they, they felt some, um, some com camaraderie with you because, because you're of, black. Because of the black people are poor people. Mm -hmm. Vietnamese people are poor people. White folks, rich folks. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you the truth I how it was. And know. like I told you, when I pay for a piece of pussy, I could pay for it for $2 or a bar of soap. You're going to pay $20 or more when I was over there. That's how it was. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you might find some cooler white boys that, that could work their way and go, through, but back then, uh-uh. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, Anything else about the end country that you want to tell us about? What, about Vietnam? Mm hmm I was, hell, I was glad to get out of hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Uh, the day I left Vietnam, they was telling us on the, on the, on the, on the intercom that they're going to be bumping some people off the flight. I think I killed somebody if they done bumped me off my flight. <laughs> and I wanted to get the hell out of there. When you left Vietnam, where you, were where you going to fly out of? Tonsonu? So, Tonsonu. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, and over there, then they had, uh, they, we had the thing called Flying Tiger Airlines. That was the name of the planes that we flew out of there. Big, 400 people on the damn plane, they were so big. Yeah. You know? Well, when you flew out, did anybody that you knew go with you no. on the plane? You're by yourself? No, that pretty, those group of guys stayed right there. To, if they got the time left, you know what I mean? Like I said, it was like a, a group of guys, they wasn't, wasn't no group that got together. If it was time for you to go, you left, you and the other guys stayed yeah. there. So where did you fly? When you left, did you, where did you land at? Different places on Oakland? the way? To, same place. Did, did you I, fly all the way nonstop to Oakland? I, you know what? Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever really gave it, leaving Vietnam. I gave a thought about how I, just like I told you, I, I went in Alaska, <laughs> Japan, that kind of thing. Right. I never thought about it. But I left Vietnam. The only thing I wanted to do was get the hell out of Vietnam. It wasn't about where I was on my way to or where I was. You know what I mean? I never, to the day, to the right now. I really even thought about that, which was the flight on the way back. All I knew is I got my ass on a plane and I landed in California. Uh, at Oakland? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oakland. Mm -hmm. Now, you, were you in uniform when you landed there? Same shit I was having when I left Vietnam. Well, I'm curious because I want to ask you. What? Uh, after you got off the airplane, did were you out walking around with your uniform on? Or? Yeah, with my jungle outfit on. Yeah. Did anybody uh, bother you? Nah, not no, not no. Nah, we was on we was on a base, so you weren't looking for no private people. Oh, well, yeah. we did have some things that happened. We had a guy. Well, that, uh, that happened when I was coming back. A woman uh, killed a guy getting off an airplane. One of our Vietnam veterans. Where at? In California. I tell California. If, if you go back in the books, you can find it. You know the story about this. And she killed this boy because her her son had got killed in Vietnam, and she had the thing. I don't, you know, her brain went click, and she had a thing where if her son didn't get back, could nobody get back. So she shot and killed this young boy. Uh, were, you, were you there when that happened? Mm, or? No, not no. right there. No, no. But that did happen. Yeah. But you say you landed on a base, mm, Oakland. 
wherever Oakland, wherever, yeah, the base. Um, and how long were you at Oakland? Uh, probably a day and a half, maybe. I was, uh, it wasn't less than three days. Yeah. I was out of the, out of the war, no, to be with the Vietnam and military no more. Yeah. Less than three days. Yeah. I, yeah. Matter of fact, it might have been only two days. Uh, Pat Allen had a question that he wanted to ask you. I don't know how much time, how much more time we have on the, I, on the tape. But I ain't got nothing to do with nowhere to go. You were telling me uh, on our way down go here ahead. about uh, taking fire at uh, one of these bases where you were mortars and rockets. Oh yeah, we got a lot of that. Tell, tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to we doing the Tet Offensive, we, uh, the, we call them gooks. They started uh, giving us rockets, they wake us up in the morning, put us to bed, well, lunchtime, they wake up, uh, make us, well, we, they knew we, we was moving, they knew when lunchtime was, dinner time, that kind of thing. That's when we'd get rockets and mortars on us, you know, we'd be out to run away. A lot of times you don't run. Like I tell people, when you, when you got people shooting at you, running is the worst thing to do, because you might run into it when you run out the damn door, but then sometimes, you, you, you sort of you sort of get yourself try to find a bunker to get into. It. Are you on the base at Fu, Fu Ben when that happened? Yeah, Fu, Fu Ben province. We got hit every day for about probably almost six months, almost quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Tet Offensive, they pretty much like I say woke you up. And I've had uh, I, I had bought me two. I, back in the day, we wore suits in the city. You know when you came back home. Back in the 60s, we wore suits. Anyway, you could buy a silk and mohair suit for about 60 bucks or less. And back in them days, well, that's a couple hundred dollar suit back in the right. States, you know what I mean? I had bought me a suit for every day of the week. <laughs> I had bought six of them, had them in my locker. As a matter of fact, I had a locker next to my locker with the suits in it, right? I had one suit left that the guy was making for me Cause these are silk and mohair, three-piece suits, dress and everything. Back when they was wearing back in the day, part, you know. Anyway, uh, I had one suit left in the in the tailor there, and we got hit one night, and my locker that blew up. The, the one with the suits in it had holes all through the suit. wasn't no more suits. So all my suits here, I got maybe a month left in Vietnam, and I got this one suit. But in a way, it was sort of good because by the time I got back to the United States, we weren't wearing suits no more. So I was out of I was out of style like a what? But I had lost six suits, and I had that one that I came home with. You know what I mean? Yes. Because it had rocket it had holes in it from the rockets and mortars. You know. And, uh, what, what kind of accommodations did you have uh, over there as far as your protection? Where, where you slept? And oh, we okay. Right. If I show that picture here, mm -hmm. we uh, our bunkers are uh, okay. Well, this is our this is our main bunker, the one we are sitting on here. Yeah, that's our main bunker. That's we sitting on the top of our main bunker. That's the one we get. We if we can get into it while something was going on, we was really cool. But then our basic bunker that was around our hooches was this. I got some more pictures, probably better pictures. But see, that's our bunker right there. Matter of fact, where I'm standing at is the back door to my bunker, okay? To where uh, I, not to my bunker, to my bunk. And around the bunk, around our bunk, we had to, was tent, tent part, then around the area, about maybe three or four feet high, around the bunker, then we had sandbags. You know, in your box. Yep. So it wasn't all peaches and cream over there. You? Oh no, you it was hell over there. It was hell over there. It wasn't no. But like I told you, it was. Uh, when you're a young man, you don't see shit like you see now. But uh, yeah, we. Uh, you got hit quite a bit, and uh, ducking and dodging rockets and mortars. The time I've been on the ground where were you sitting at? And I'm laying there. You understand what I'm saying? You ever had, I tell people, have you had life flashes? Have you ever had any life flashes? Where you see your life in front of your face? Where you see things that, that, that went on in your life through mm -hmm. you? I've had those. 
They call them, anybody that's been close to death or those kind of mortars, they had life flashes. I've had, your brain goes to, just like a movie, things happen, things about your family, things about your, your people, your parents, whatever, right. just flashes through you. Just like an old movie. You know the old movies be so flash. That's how that, that picture in your brain when those mortars and rockets and you ducking and dodging and hoping like hell that ain't gonna hit your ass. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Really, it's uh... Tim, Tim, earlier in this, uh, in this interview, it's, you made it sound like it was a lot of fun over there and you had a good time. No, and, and, and it's times. Anytime, uh, when I say things like this, I said I had a ball. Yes, I did at the times that, you know, but we, it was held over there. You know what I mean? But like, like I said, when you're a young person, you don't see things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then and if you look back on it now, Hell yeah, I had fun. Like I told you, I tried to get every piece of pussy I can get while I was over there. You, you, you talk about the light flashes. I think they call them flashbacks. No. Right. How often do you have those? How often? I don't. I had them a few times while I was over there when, when the mortars and rockets was close and I was worried about I'm finna die. Do, do you have any dreams or flashbacks now? nowadays? Uh, it's quite, it's, it, it comes and goes. In a, in a, that's over time. See, I live in a neighborhood, believe it or not, I hear bullets and shooting every day. Every day. You know why? I live right next to the damn uh, police uh, range that the guns be shooting all day. I'm serious. About a couple of blocks from where I live, there's a armory. Okay? So, you know what I mean? I, I, do, a, I do a lot of shooting myself. Yeah. I, I'm a gun enthusiast. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, Tim, I want to get to your civilian life. Um, oh, that's a hell of a You came, thing. you landed at Oakland, mm -hmm. and you're really going to be discharged now. Where, mm -hmm. where do you go to be discharged? Right there in Oakland. Okay. I didn't go nowhere. When I left, when I, when I got off the plane in, from Vietnam and over to Oakland, I could, I could, I, it, ain't, it couldn't have been maybe two days at the most. I was on another plane coming home. I got off that plane, ain't never been back on one, I can't say since. I flew one time since I left Vietnam. I went to, I told you I went to uh, Las Vegas. Okay, That's the so last you, time I was on a plane. So you were discharged while you were in Oakland? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because back then, they, like I told you, you had six months or less, you had a Straight out. Okay. You can get straight out. Now you said you flew a plane back home. Where's home at in 1969? To Vietnam. From Vietnam. Uh -huh. Cleveland. Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you land in Cleveland mm -hmm. and uh, you're a civilian now. Yeah. What do you Wait a minute. Tell you, tell you another thing that happened back during that time. You talking about back then. Remember, you know they got white, white fire engines now. You know what I mean? That kind of thing? The what? White fire engines. You know these engines that they have some way places? They might be white. Fire engines? Yeah. They yeah. had this back then. I don't know. Oh, but okay. we did. For a while they had white fire engines. Why? I don't know. Because it was always red when I was coming Yeah. Up. But anyway, back in Cleveland they had these white. And I saw one one night and I'm going, okay, what the hell is this? You know what I mean? A white fire engine. You know? That one in my my rule books back in those days, you know what I mean? But they don't, I don't know if they still do it. In some places I do, they probably got I've right never seen one, no. Uh, yeah. But anyway. So what are you gonna, what are you gonna do for a living now that you're- so I'm out of, Viet, out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a cousin, he worked for General Motors back in them days and they, I, I put his on my application, I got hired at General Motors. Uh, I was out of the Army two weeks. Okay. I started working in General Motors. Which plan is that? At uh, Cleveland and uh, 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 Brook Park. Brook Park, yeah. And uh, what are you producing there? Cars. Which car? Uh, we did the Malibu, the old Malibu, and we did uh, truck fenders, those bubble type truck fenders, and different things like that. Also, we did uh, transmissions. Okay. The transmission. Yeah, and. Uh, how long did you work for General Motors? A couple of years. Then we started laying off everybody back then in 69 and 70. They started laying off a lot of people, so I got caught up in that. 
But you know, being a young man, an asshole back in the day. But anyway, bought me a 69 Camaro, drove that around, tore it up, get that kind of shit. Yeah. I lived, you know? So, so did you quit General Motors when you were laid off? Pretty much. I went and got another job. I did all, kind, I did all kinds of things. I got a job uh, through custodian job, right? And in that custodian job, I ended up uh, becoming the manager of a 160 suite hotel, old type hotel. And then I've had all kinds of things happen to me in my life. I got a job working at Case Western Reserve College as a housekeeping supervisor. And that came through an accident. But uh, I did that for a couple of years. And something I, in these type of jobs, these particular jobs I told you about, I knew nothing about at the beginning. But I did them all, and I only one that finished and did, you know, pretty good job. You know what I mean? And it gets, I'm going to tell you now, it gets even deeper than that. The particular hotel that I was uh, managing, got, got ended up managing, it was a, a dope ridding, prostitution ridding, ridden hotel in Cleveland. And I accidentally became the manager. I had a guy stick a 45 automatic up to my head and, and, tip, and told me he was going to blow my brains out. So I ended up telling him, I said, you may as well go ahead on. I can't do nothing about it. I'm standing there with an over and under 210 shotgun in my hand. He got a 45 automatic up to my head. I had things like that happen to me in my life. But guess who's still sitting here? But anyway, I mean, <laughs> if I told you that all that stuff that didn't happen to me, I could have been a, here I go, I don't need to tell you all this. I could have been a big pimp if I want in it. Hulk, I could have stuff that, whew, girl. Mm -hmm. What's the longest job you had? 20 some years. And where was that? Butler County, MRDD. Butler County? Uh, MRDD. Mm -hmm. And what'd you do for that? Everything. Look, and when I say everything, I did everything outside of my job, my job description that they paid me for. But I did a little bit of everything. Seriously, everything. Mm -hmm. I worked with the clients. I drove trucks. I did everything. And did you retire from that? Yep. And when did you retire? About uh, 2001. 2001. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to you got discharged because mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, you got married, didn't you? Oh, you know, I got married in 1977. Uh, well, that's a full eight years after you got out of the service. Mm -hmm. when, when, uh, what's your wife's name? Vanessa. Vanessa? Mm -hmm. And her maiden name? Oh, was she, oh uh, Crowell was her maiden name. I'm sorry? Crowell. That was her maiden name. Uh, and where did you meet uh, Vanessa? That's a story to that, too. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear that story? Yes, we do. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. anyway, like I could tell you, anyway, let me, let me put this down. Oh, here we go. Let me say, let me, where should I start on how I met my wife? Right. Okay. In Cleveland, I had broken with my oldest son's mom, and this was a few months after that. Oh, well, I don't know exactly. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, I was riding down the street one day, and this girl was, this is a story. This girl was walking down the street. I had a 68 Cutlass. And uh, I picked this girl, it was raining. And uh, I picked this girl, her and a kid. I'm trying to make sure I get this right, because it's been so long now. Anyway, I picked this girl up in the rain, dropped her off at home. She told me to come on up. She had a cousin there from out of town. Her and her boyfriend visiting her from out of town. So I go up, her boyfriend, the boyfriend wasn't there. I mean, the girlfriend wasn't there. Her cousin, she wasn't there, but the boyfriend was. So I met him and I left them and didn't, didn't try to see them no more. After this, I'm just cutting this a lot of short. So anyway, I was right within the next week or so maybe. I don't know exactly how long it was. I was riding down the street and this girl was coming out of this uh, uh, drugstore. 
And I like big women, nice sized women. I don't like little skinny, right away. So anyway, she had a big afro back then in the six, uh, early 70s, in the 70s, 77. So anyway, I uh, make a U-turn. This girl that came out of the drugstore. So I pick her up and talking, right? Away. So we pretty much, pretty much moved in again. day I met her, <laughs> okay? We moved in together pretty much that day. She was standing in this uh, hospital at the Mount Sinai Hospital in Cleveland. She was a uh, uh, secretary. That was her job. Is this Vanessa we're talking yeah. about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was in, uh, anyway, we moved in together the same day. She was living in this, in this, uh, uh, how can I see it? Uh, it's a place they had in the hospital for people that worked there. It was single. Mm -hmm. So they had rooms for them to, to live in. It was like a dormitory oh, yeah. with the kitchen down here in the bathrooms, that kind of thing. So anyway, somehow I pretty much moved in with her. We stayed there in one, one single bed. the dormitory? Bed. Yeah, pretty oh. much. She worked there every day. Yeah. And I, I had another job somewhere else. Anyway, I pretty much moved in with her that day. That, that I met her, okay? So anyway, we was together for a month or so. But anyway, she said that uh, uh, one of her family members was having a part, a picnic. I'm cutting through a lot of stuff. So anyway, I, uh, we go to her picnic, this family member's picnic. So anyway, we, we get there, and I don't think, like I, I told him I've been in a place where he worked at before, and I can prove it, I'm gonna tell Anyway, I, I, I remember shit that came back to me that I had been in the office where he works at. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so anyway, I meet this, this uh, pick up her, so anyway, I'm trying to get back on the track. You went to a party. Anyway, we went to that party. So it's this girl there, right? And I'm looking at, I don't forget faces. I'm looking at this girl there and I'm going, I met this girl somewhere before, you know, within this few months or whatever. So anyway, come to find out that this girl that was there that I had remembered was the girl I had picked up in the rain that right. day, okay? So I didn't meet her cousin, which now is the girl that I'm going with. You but know. while she was there in Cleveland, her and her boyfriend broke up. Through total coincidence, I picked this girl up one day, <laughs> and it was her. Didn't meet, you know, there wasn't no connection, you understand? Right. So anyway, within a couple of months through all this happening, I end up, we, we come, we didn't, we've been together for so long, a couple of months now, she wanted me to introduce me to her family, okay? So we come down to Middletown, the old boyfriend, here she back in town, gonna come over to visit her, so I'm there, he remember, this is all within, happening within three or four months or so of each <laughs> other, so he remembered me, me in Cleveland, right. which I didn't meet her at the same time. Right. But he thinks her cousin hooked her, me and her up together, but that didn't happen that way. I do cold, total, and I feel that if I'd have met her that day, I wouldn't be sitting here now, okay? But I met this woman just through that way, and we got married, and we was married for 32 years, and a few, about 10 years ago, she decided that she didn't want to be married to me no more, so she moved out and bought her a condo, and I'm still living in the house that we, her family home, I'm still living in that home today. And she bought her condo, still living in that condo. She, she worked, she didn't work for every, she's a very smart lady. But anyway, she didn't work for every big wig in Middletown. She went from the, when she first started back, when we first moved back here, she worked for drug, count, drug counseling, which was a thing across the street. Then she got a job working as assistant to the, to the police chief was this personal assistant. Then she uh, opened and came up to, to move her up in, a, in a, another position, make more money uh, for the city water, 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 not the water, but the... Uh, sewage? Sewage, yeah. yeah. She worked for the, got the job, so she worked for the police department for a couple, two or three years. And then she got this other position that was higher money. Then she worked from there, for the, the one you just said. Then she worked to the water department. She was the head girl there, okay? Then she went from there to the head, to the head lady at the city 
department for the city, the streets and parks and recreation. Oh, yeah. She was the head girl for that, okay? Now she's the head, she's the head of the system to the fire chief in Middletown. Oh, at the present time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. She would work through all those. <laughs> Very smart lady. She knows what she's doing on her job, mm -hmm. but being a person, a human, she had problems that I know of. You understand what I'm saying? What about um, children? I, me and her, we had three children, me and her. And uh, her first child we lost, he died. Then I need to see him, but anyway. And, and what was what the name of your, your three children? Was well, my child, child that died, we never did name him. Oh. He only lived a couple of hours after oh, okay. he was born. And then after that, I, we had, a couple of years later, we had, uh, that was in 80, we had three, two sons since then. Uh, the oldest of him is 35 and one is 34. And what are their names? Melvin, my oldest is named Timmy Motley Jr. And the, the baby boy is Melvin. I named him after my stepfather. My stepfather that I told you in there, his name was Silas Melvin. I didn't like the word Sil name Silas, so I named him Melvin. Melvin. Mm -hmm. And, did and they then I, my oldest son, I have an oldest son prior to my wife, oh. who was by one of my girlfriends when we was coming up. Okay. My oldest son, he's 47. What's his name? Uh, Deontay. Deontay? Mm -hmm. His last name is Jackson. Jackson. See, back then they couldn't, you couldn't carry over the names if you weren't married, okay? So his last name is Jackson. That was her, his mother's maiden name. And um, what was her, his mother's name? Uh, uh, Geraldine Jackson. Geraldine Jackson. Mm -hmm. And uh, and his name was Deontay? Deontay. Deontay. Yep. Does Deontay have any children? No, he don't have any children. Okay. Don't know one of my kids have a child. Is my oldest son here. Is that Timothy? Yeah. And... <coughs> He has a, a child? Two name? sons. Two sons? Mm -hmm. What are their names? Uh, Cameron, that's the oldest, he's 16. And <coughs> Malik, Malik, he's uh, 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Do you see them uh, quite often? Every now and then. Uh, every now and then. Uh, I'm not too close with my oldest son. He, anyway, we all got problems and he got a anyway, nice big story. Yeah. And my oldest, my old, the oldest boy, no, not the oldest, but the big boy, uh, he just, I can't get him to, he needs to lose a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I need to not say that because they're going to see this maybe one day. <laughs> anyway. uh, at this point in our interviews, I usually uh, ask Brian and Pat if they have any uh, questions, and they, they always do. Mm -hmm. So, I, right. I'm here. Brian, you first. How did your family end up uh, in Cleveland? Was there was there a connection when you guys were in Alabama? How your mom? You know was what? Born? You know what? All I know can remember is my mother left Alabama to come out and get a better job. She was the first of our family to do so. Okay, so and who you she were, might have known prior to that, I've never known, and nobody never told me. She never told me. You, you know? were about five years old when she left. Seven. Oh, she left. I was about five. About, yeah. yeah. Were you able to keep in touch with your mom or relatives when you were over in Vietnam? My mom. In contact with anybody? Well, my mother, I did. Well, I was tell you, I was in the military so short. Uh, they, they pretty much couldn't find me. When, well, they say you couldn't find me. But uh, my mother had, you know, wrote a note name. I didn't look for, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I was only in 21 months. Like I told you, my stepfather, my real father, and my stepmother, they didn't even know I was in the military until after I got out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Less than two years, you know what I'm talking about? Did you pick up uh, Vietnam language? Oh, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Choy, right? I, I, I can still say a lot of the broken words that we used back then, you know. I uh, pretty much I hung out with the people, you know what I mean? I, you know, you had, to, you had to learn some broken, broken English and shit, you know what I mean? Do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was curious, you talked about the uh, USO, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I know in 60, 1968, I know James Brown did a tour through Vietnam. I was wondering if he came I didn't get to see none of those big people like that. Were you, were you aware that he came through? Yeah. Uh, uh, that he was touring? More than likely. Yeah, but you know what? Like I say, if it don't hit you right in the front of your face, 
Hey, it's another world. Uh, Did you ever get any R and R? Did you get when you were uh, in Vietnam? Did you get any? No R and R. Didn't go R and R at all. Went, all I wanted to do was get the hell out of there. You know what I mean? I could have took a, a two week R and R, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get the hell out of Dodge. Longer time I was over there, it was too long for me at the time. It, you know, like I tell you, I had fun. I did. I mean, but the fact is, I don't care. I still wanted to leave. You understand what I'm saying? Didn't want to be there. Once you get rockets and mortars, you don't want to be around stuff like that. But in the meantime, you got to live. I wasn't going to hide in a hole. We had guys with things that happened to guys over there. They had a thing, I don't know if it's what it is, but anyway, that uh, venereal disease, mm -hmm. that guys come over there and get and will never be able to come back. Mm -hmm. I ran into guys and shit like that happened. There's one guy, never messed around and had no sex with no women. He got a Dear John letter one day. When he got him some pussy and caught that goddamn stuff. Just that quick. But I was trying to fuck everything I had. Everything I could. I, see, the day I was leaving Vietnam, or the day before rather, I was out hitchhiking on PC, on, P, on PC, trying to go and give me some piece of pussy the day before I left. I'm serious. Shoot. Did you, did you uh, have much when you were out, like, out, what did you, mean? you have any inner, uh, things with insects and things like that? Oh, yeah, I got some big stories. Mosquitoes over there, them some bad suckers, boy. Mosquitoes will carry, tear you a new butthole in Vietnam. Yes, they was. They had one that's so small you couldn't even see it. And that's when it was flying around. The only reason I saw it one day, I'm sitting there on the edge of my bed and I'm seeing these little things flying around. You know, you see the dust come through the light sunlight mm -hmm. and these suckers flying around. Oh my God, you gotta see this. I'm sorry, there's a girl over there with shorts on and she was over there doing her little dance. I'm serious, right through the window over here. Look, come here, come here, hurry up. Please look, please look. Come on, please look. Come on, man, get your butt up and look. See them girls out there with shorts and shit on? Man, please look. Get over there and look. I, I, I'm sorry. See there they dance. This one over the shorts on was dancing. Oh, yeah. Look at her dancing. I told you with shorts. Look, boy, you think I'm bullshitting you? Yeah. You got to go look, we, man. You got to remember to change that seat in the next interview we do. Hey, man. Uh -huh. They got a boom box and they, they, oh, God, three of them over here. Yeah, we oh, got to change God. that. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. But I looked over there and saw that girl. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> when you came back, when you came back from Vietnam. What? Uh, well, maybe this was already happening before you went over there. But you know, you had the whole people growing their hair out, like the hippies and stuff. Yeah. Was that? I was a hippie too. But that wasn't happening too much before you joined, right? Was it? Was it much of a culture difference when you got off the plane and in America? Did, you, did things look different? Oh yeah, that was a whole different world. Like I told you, when I went over there, they partying over there. <laughs> Keep on track. <laughs> I'm gonna stand here and watch these girls. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> why me? <laughs> oh. You were telling us about the culture change. Oh yeah, big time culture change because, like I told you, we was in the suits when I went in. That was the style, you know, back in the day, you know, you wore a suit, especially when you went out. You know, I went to a, when I came home and I had that one suit I told you I had on, and I went out with this, matter of fact, this particular girl just died last month, okay? The girl I used to go with, uh, she died last month. Yep. And today, when I was looking for my pictures, I saw a few, a few years back, I went up to Cleveland and, uh, Ran into her, well, went to see her. Well, you know, we had hooked up to see each other because we hadn't saw each other in years. And uh, her and her best friend, I was over their house, and, you know, somebody we all grew up with and everything. And then both of them are dead now. The oldest one, of the friend, she died about a couple of years back. But this one just died last month. Mm. The girl I went with in high school, Nancy Jordan. Yep. And here I am, still kicking. I said, bless it. I said, I'm a blessing. If you make it past 60, you're a lucky motherfucker these days. Mm -hmm. You're a lucky person. 
I think all the questions I had. Matt, do you have any questions? The only thing I uh, remember on our way down here, you told me that you had a, if you had an injury when you were over there in the Vietnam. Oh. How'd you get injured? Um, probably a piece of shrapnel. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. But anyway, I told a lie that it wasn't. Because, see, we had a mindset when I was in the military. And, you know, if you got hurt, especially doing a, a you know, action, you get a purple heart. Then nobody want no purple heart. You know what I mean? Now I sort of wish that I had it went on it. But I didn't, so that's that. You know what I mean? I caught a piece of shrapnel right here. Uh, uh, what, this is behind one of these damn ears. It's a little scar. And uh, I didn't turn it in. I turned it in as a, as a work accident. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, that particular, I had to bandage on my head. And then I went out. Oh, here goes the story. I uh, we used to crawl through the fence at night to go downtown to get a piece of. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. And uh, I, the particular night, this one guy was a new guy. He had never did it. Crawled through the barbed wire. It had the signs up that says, but it was, we knew that. But anyway, uh, he went downtown with me that night and I had this white bandage on my head and stuff. We almost got busted that night by one of the lieutenants. One guy got killed that night. Not one of our guys, another guy on the other end of the base. He uh, went out one place and came back the wrong way because he got drunk and uh, they killed him. We did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that shit happens when you don't do the right thing. Somebody you know, thought he was the enemy or? Yeah, when you come in, you, you outside of that wire, you, you're free game. If they don't know you're out there, they know mm -hmm. you coming. But see, where I was, they knew I was, well, they, but he messed up and got drunk, didn't come back in the right area, and they blew him away. Yeah. They had a lot of things like that sometimes happening, you know. But, uh, yeah, I uh, almost got busted that night. But the only reason I didn't get busted, that boy got killed. They left where I was, because they already had busters over there, but we didn't hadn't came out to give ourselves up. <laughs> but uh, when that happened, we heard the gunshots, and, and, the, and, the, and the, the lieutenant was there checking our base. And these guys who, the military, the military, army guy, they knew who we were. They knew that we was out there. You understand what I'm saying? But the lieutenant, that was checking the area, he didn't. So when that happened, he left to go see where the shooting was going on. And that's what happened. The reason I didn't get caught. It's the closest time I ever come to getting caught. Yeah. But anyway, that's what we, we used to crawl through razor wire to go downtown at night to get us up. <laughs> we could have been dead though. But you don't think about shit like that. Do you? <laughs> you know, when you don't think about stuff like that when you're a young man. You understand well, what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, cut some of this nasty we've stuff been, out. Uh, it's been one of the longest interviews we've had, and a, and a <laughs> I entertaining. We we even got close to but, to the real to the whole nine yards. But I want to. My world is a different world, and I tell people that all the time. But well, anyway. I want to take this time to thank you for the interview, yep. and I also want to thank you for your service to our country. Thank you, sir. And appreciate it, mm -hmm. and appreciate you. Yep. And uh, this particular.